What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today we're going to be talking about all the mistakes that I made with Shopify dropshipping. Now I made a ton of mistakes and I really could not cover all of them if I wanted to but um, I'm going to be trying to just go through like some of the major ones that really prevented me from growing uh, or lost me a lot of money or just you know hurt me in a pretty major way which is kind of depressing but um everyone makes mistakes and um i'm really glad that i can share them with you and hopefully prevent you from making the same ones let's go ahead and hop right into the value so on a topic completely unrelated to value this is probably the last video that i'm gonna shoot here which is absolutely crazy but um, it's probably a good thing because I'm sure you don't like staring at my white wall and white door all day. Um, but I'm moving into an apartment exactly a week from today and um, I'm really excited. So if you do want to see that, uh, just a little behind the scenes on my life, feel free to follow me at the Instagram that is probably above my head um, if I can figure out how to put it there. <laughs> Alright, so um, back to Shopify dropshipping, the first and probably one of the most detrimental mistakes that I made was um, not having enough money to start out with. I was 15 or 16, uh, I can't really remember off the top of my head, but I was really young when I first started dropshipping. Um, so I didn't really have much money and I kind of used all that I did have. But um, anyway, that was probably a grand total of like 200 to 250 dollars. Um, which is, it's not enough to start Shopify dropshipping even back then. Um, now I really, really recommend that you have at least like $400. Um, if you're lucky, you can, you know, get by with two or $300, but you really just don't want to rely on luck. So I would recommend that you like, you gotta have like 400 plus dollars. Um, that's with Instagram influencers. If you're going to be starting with Facebook, then you really need like over 800 um, and again, that's the absolute minimum. All right, so another one of the huge mistakes that I made, especially when first starting out, was having shiny object syndrome. Now, a lot of you know what I'm talking about, um, but for those of you that don't, shiny object syndrome is basically where you're, you can't focus on one specific thing because you're always like looking at like the next big thing. Like let's say you started a social media marketing agency when that was a really big thing. And then you moved on to cryptocurrency because that was a really big thing. And then you moved on to Shopify dropshipping because people were talking about that. You just keep hopping from business to business to business or even from product to product to product. Um, and you just, you can't focus and capitalize on one specific thing. Um, and it affects a lot of beginners and even people that have been doing this for a long time. So when I first started out, I changed niches multiple times. I changed, you know, I had like 80 or 90 products in my store um, for the dumbest reasons ever. And really what I needed to do was just focus in on like two or three products and then I probably could have made them work. So another mistake that I made was not having a set plan of action when I started. So like I said, I jumped from a bunch of things when I was starting e-commerce as far as products and niches go. Um, but I also jumped when it comes to like advertising and stuff like that. Like I was doing like Pinterest and like Etsy and Instagram and Facebook and just Twitter. I mean, all this stuff and really all I needed to do was focus in on one specific thing. So before I started, I really wish that I would have just um, written out like a plan. Like let's say we spend $200 testing different ads with influencers and then we spend $300 um, scaling the best ad and if it doesn't work after that $500 and we move on to the next product something like that like that's just an example obviously but i do that for all the products that i launch now um, i have specific plans for every store i make and every product that i launch because you don't want to spend too much money um, and you don't want to spend too little money and it really just helps um, in so so many ways because you're just going to have something to rely on so that you're not just like kind of wandering around in the dark Another mistake that I did make when starting out 
was um, using my business email as my AliExpress email. So um, <laughs> some of you may know AliExpress sends you like six notifications per order, which is absolutely ridiculous. And even though you can turn off a couple of those, there's still like delivery notifications and stuff like that that you can't turn off. So just use like a burner account for your email for AliExpress. Um, I actually checked that email the other day and there was like over 25,000 unread emails, which was crazy, um, but also very funny. All right, so why we're on the subject of AliExpress, one of the big mistakes that I made for over a year, um, even when I was making like 30 grand plus a month in revenue, maybe not 30 grand, maybe like 20 grand plus a month in revenue. Um, I wasn't using an AliExpress affiliate website. Now I have multiple videos on this. It's really, really like un underused and it's just free money. So basically an AliExpress affiliate website, it just gives you cash back on all the orders that you make. And I make close to a thousand dollars a month on a really good month from it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty significant. Um, so yeah, anyway, I didn't use that for over a year and I'm sure I lost out on an absolutely insane amount of money that I really don't want to think about. So anyway, if you're first starting out, make sure that you sign up for a mid ad. Um, you can click the video above my head if you'd like to learn more about that. Another thing that I did not do for a very long time, um, and I should have, was using a fulfillment agent. Now fulfillment agents are basically just like kind of like AliExpress because it ships from China, but it ships a lot faster. Well, I'm talking like seven to 12 days if you have a good agent. Um, and you also get cheaper prices the majority of the time. So I highly recommend that you use an agent if you're doing above like 25 orders a day, but that's really gonna depend on the specific agent and on the price of your product and just stuff like that. So another thing that I did not do for the longest time was use a profit calculator to figure out how much money I was making. Um, there's really two of them on the Shopify app store. One of them is called Lifetimely, um, which is new. And it's not as good as the next one we're gonna talk about, but it's a whole lot cheaper. And then the next one is called Order Metrics. And that one's pretty good, but it's pretty expensive. It starts at $30 a month and then it goes up if you're doing a certain amount in revenue. But anyway, those just allow you to track the exact amount that you're making every day after Facebook ads, after product costs, after transaction fees, everything like that. And they're really useful because you kind of need to know how much money you're making. All right, so one of the other things that really prevented me from growing early on was being afraid to scale because my profit decreased. Um, like when you're running five or $10 a day Facebook ads and they're doing really well, you may have like a four, five, six, seven return on ad spend, that's great. But um, there's only so much horizontal scaling that you can do effectively. But eventually you kind of have to bump up your budget no matter which way you're doing it. Um, and your profit is going to decrease, that's just what happens when you're scaling. But for me, I would much rather spend, you know, a thousand dollars to make four thousand dollars than to spend ten dollars to make a hundred dollars. So just realize that when you're starting out, that if you really want to take it to the next level, you kind of have to sacrifice a small percentage of your profit margins. Obviously, you shouldn't be unprofitable or anywhere close to that but um, you just can't stay on the same level forever. One thing that cost me an incredible amount of money was thinking that super, super big products are saturated. Um, many of you know that there's like, there's like all time greats as far as drop shipping goes, like fidget spinners and like, I don't know, like the little spiral ear, ear cleaners, um, rose bears, like, products that made seven figures or even eight figures. I mean, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, those products obviously have a ton of people selling them, but at the same time, they have an absolutely insanely large market. Um, so those products generally last for like three to six months. And you may see that product on month one and you could see like a ton of people selling it, but really there's going to be like 
10 times that amount of people selling the product in a couple of months. And even if you do have like a good amount of competition for huge, huge, huge products, like you can still get in and make a lot of money. So I think for me now, I just like, I'm not afraid to test something. If I know that it's winning and if I see that it's at least kind of a recent product, um, I don't really care about the competition. I, I think it's worth testing because if it's blowing up then you really want to get in on that. And even if you don't get in at the absolute beginning, um, you can still make a lot of money before it hits its peak and starts dying out. And even then, you can still make some money. Another major thing that I did not take advantage of was holidays. Now, I kind of did, but um, not as much as I do now and not as much as you really should at all. So for major holidays like Christmas, Black Friday, even like Halloween, Valentine's Day, stuff like that, like you can make a lot of money. Now, um, depending on how big the holiday is, I generally run like three sets of influencer ads and each of those sets has like five to 10 influencers stacked on it. And the reason being is when you're running sales like that, people are kind of just like looking to buy something and it looks a lot like, like it makes more sense if it's a holiday sale than if it's just like a, a normal like flash sale or whatever. So um, holidays are really, really good for me. And I just turn up my advertising like tenfold. And then I even like, I will, I'll put stuff on my website. Like I'll kind of decorate it if it's Christmas and I'll put like a little Santa hat on my logo and like change the cover of the website and just stuff like that. Little changes can really make a big difference. And as far as holidays go, you really gotta take advantage of them because people are just looking to spend money. Another thing that I did not take advantage of and I still kind of don't take advantage of is email marketing. Email marketing is basically just advertising for free because you already have those people on your list and it costs no money to send them emails unless you have a really crappy email service in which case you should find another. Now I do have flows set up now but I did not previously and flows are basically just automated emails when a customer does something like abandons their cart. So I really recommend that you do have flow set up and then I also recommend that you send like a tailored email at least every week. Now, I really should be doing this. I tell myself I'm going to, but um, I really don't end up doing this every week and I know that I really, really should. I also did not outsource soon enough when I was first starting out. In my opinion, once you get about 10K a month, then you should automatically outsource your order fulfillment if it's not already. Outsourcing basically just means getting someone else to do it if you didn't know that. Um, also, if you're getting a lot of customer emails and if that's taking up like more than like 30 minutes of your time probably, then I would also outsource that. In addition, if there's other stuff that takes a lot of your time, for example, making your video ads, um, then I would also outsource that. Okay, so after talking about all the bad things that I've done, um, I've done way more, but after talking about some of the mistakes that I made, we're gonna talk about like the really good things that I have done and I appreciate myself doing. Um, and one of those is keeping track of my business expenses. This is super huge. Um, especially when tax season rolls around because you really just if you don't write them all down then it's just impossible and you're gonna lose a lot of money that you could have written off another thing that I'm really glad that I did do was not go and blow all my money I reinvested everything I made back into my business for months and months years and years and I'm still doing that to this day I spend a very small portion of what I make and the rest just goes into my business I highly recommend that you do that too once you start making some money. Another thing that I am really glad that I did do was go ahead and set up a company early. I have an LLC and I set that up before I started making money which was probably not a good idea but anyway I set one up really early and I set up a business bank account really early and I got an accountant really early and I cared about like the legal side of things which is super super important you need to get your tax structure in place and just make sure that you're doing everything by the book before you get in trouble for it 
Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you were able to take a lot of value out of this and hopefully I was able to prevent you from some of the really stupid mistakes that I made. Be sure to hit that big red subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.